Today on The Difference, we welcome international speaker and best-selling author, John Bevere. Known for his bold and uncompromising approach to God's Word, John shares from his book, X, Why You Are Called to Multiply. I'm firmly convinced we don't have results like this because we're not praying accurately, yeah. we're not believing accurately. You have not because you ask not. And so then you I ask wrote amiss. this book because I want to, not only do I help people identify their gifts, develop their gifts, but I want people to have the faith to develop their gifts. Hello and welcome to The Difference. Have you ever asked yourself, what is your God-given purpose and does he have a plan for you? No. Today, we're not only gonna discuss that very topic, but we're going to show you in the word of God how you can take the multiplication factor in your life and see God's promises come to fruition. John Bevere is here to share with us from his latest book. You don't wanna miss it. We'll be right back after this. All of us have a call of God on our life and every single one of us are given unique gifts by God to accomplish that calling. However, many are not accomplishing this calling because they're paralyzed. They're concerned possibly they may miss God or they may do something wrong. I don't know what sphere of influence you're in. You could be a businessman, businesswoman, stay home mom, in healthcare, in education, in the arts, in government. I don't know, but one thing I do know, you are called to multiply. For years, I saw being faithful as only being dependable, reliable, consistent, trustworthy. However, the day came, and I remember when it happened, when God opened my eyes to show me one of the most important definitions of faithful is to multiply. What I wanna do in this book, I wanna help you discover your gifts, I wanna help you develop your gifts, and I wanna help you multiply your gifts so you can build the kingdom of God effectively on this earth as Jesus has commissioned you to do. Welcome back to The Difference. Kendall and I have so enjoyed having our dear friend, John Bevere, here with us today. And John, we've talked about the way that you and your family are ministering to the nations of the world through Messenger International. X, multiplying your God-given potential. potential. This is what book for you as far as number? Number 22. Number 22. Yes, sir. And here is something that I admire greatly and have experienced personally. Um, the consistency of quality and excellence, it's, it's a testament to your diligence because 22 books is in and of itself a feat, but 22 good books, that's, that's the gift that, of that, God. That's, yeah. a that's what I'm talking about. But, but you that, said that's a key ingredient, that you don't that, write a book there, unless there, it's from there God. Therein lies what I'm saying about experienced it personally. You know, um, when I had the opportunity to become more familiar with Messenger, it really changed my perspective on how the body of Christ works together. Because my context for reaching the nations was training up somebody within your congregation and then sending one individual into an area that they felt called to go. And, and, and there's certainly historical context for God oh, yeah. doing great works through missionaries like that. I'm not discrediting that, but that was my only perspective. This is how I saw the operation and function of reaching nations. And then I was able to find out how Messenger International resources to your statements earlier about the local church. Right. He not only resourced the local church here in San Antonio, Texas at Cornerstone by providing this kind of content to pastors like me, but you, through the direction of the Holy Spirit and, and what you believed God leading you to do, have resourced hundreds of thousands of churches in some of the most distant, remote parts of the world. And the way you're doing it is by giving these resources to pastors right. so that as voices of influence in their own community, they can reach their church. Now, see, I understand that because I'm the voice of influence at Cornerstone. The members of Cornerstone trust me. I'm their shepherd. So when you tell me about a, a pastor in Uganda or you talk to about a pastor in Albania or you talk about a pastor mm -hmm. in a place where the church is underground like Iraq or Iran or Afghanistan, these are places where Messenger International is taking these kinds of resources and they're giving them to that pastor so that that pastor can reach his community, reach his church and touch their life in a very significant way. Where do you see 
people utilizing their God-given gifts to multiply that? Well, first of all, you've just said so I much. I know. <laughs> Um, well, I'm take notes. But no, I only did it in a minute I, and a half. I, I want, I want, I, a minute and a half. All right, I got to do this quick. <laughs> no, no, no. I did it in a minute no, and a half. You talk all you want. Minutes, well, you so much time. good things that you brought out here. First of all, um, a plane can go nowhere with just the fuselage. You need the INS system. You need the engines. You need the, the wings, right? Messenger International is just a piece of this puzzle. We've been able, and when I say we, Cornerstone's included, you and, and, and Kendall and, and John and Diana. And we the made whole it a focus of our missions outreach because I came home, I told dad, I said, look, I have seen a way that we can take the resources of our church and leverage it all over the world. And he said, how? I said, through Messenger International. So we've been able to give away f over 41 million now resources to pastors and leaders in 111 languages and 226 nations. So we're f 15 nations short, right, of the whole world. We've done this together. We realize that we're just a team member. You're a team member. Yeah. So the whole the whole football team that won the Super Bowl six times was not just Ch Tom Brady, although he's playing so good with Tampa Bay right now. He yeah. had a big part, but that's another story. But what, what you said that's so crucial to understanding this is a couple things. If I send a missionary from America over to a country, it takes seven years for him to really learn the language, the culture, and everything about the people. Where is and most don't last that long. <clears throat> right. Whereas if I put the word of God into a national, he's raised up with that culture. Secondly, if I build a building over there for them, they're still dependent on us. Mm -hmm. But if I give yeah. them the faith through the word of God, because Jesus said my church would be built on revelation knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. So we gave Bibles to China and the Chinese came back and said, we gave them the beta Satan and the Bible. They came back and they said, please, Spend the money on the beta Satan, not the Bible. We have Bibles. And this is the underground church. Yeah. And we we're like, oh my goodness. So, you know, I realized, God, is this going to appear weird that I'm raising this money to give b books? But then the, the revelation came to me that Jesus said, I'll build my church on revelation knowledge. So the other, the other na natural, natural aspect of it is if you look at Dale Car or Andrew Carnegie, from 1883 to 1918, he built over 3,000 libraries. He was a philanthropist, right? Yeah. And all but three, 1,701 of those libraries were in all of three states of the United States. When did the United States become a very powerful nation between 1880 and 1920? Why? The, the public was given knowledge. Yeah. And, and so now what's so exciting is this is what we've done together is we've built a unbelievable app by one of the finest app developing companies in the United States. Now we've put a million and a half resources in Iran, right? That pastor in Iran can hit one button and send the Beta Satan Thanks. course, the Beta Satan book, the Beta Satan audio book to every single person in his underground secret church wow. and with just his iPhone, iPhone, with just his Android, with just yeah. his tablet. So I really believe it's that, technology that a dictator cannot control. And I believe that's our Roman road. If you uh -huh. look at the Roman road started 300 BC, why those shipping lanes and the roads to the whole known part of the world would be developed right when Jesus came, when he was born, so that the apostles could reach the whole known world. This is the last days. Jesus is about to return. This is why I love this ministry so much. You actually believe in the second coming of Jesus. So, Looking forward to it. <laughs> actually, me too. <laughs> and, and, and now our Roman roads is actually the Wi-Fi. Yeah. It, yeah. It's the ability to communicate globally and what what's happening right now in space they are literally trying to make wi-fi available for the planet hey it might be wrong intentions behind some of that yeah but who cares we're going to use, use the, the roman yeah. roads were, were there yeah. weren't great R rome, yeah. rome used the road to dominate the world so that they could control it they lost control but the body of christ is still here and moving forward yes yes and, and you know one of the things that I've tried to communicate, and I know Pastor Hagee has tried to communicate, and I've heard you share it the same way. When we get to eternity, there will be people from all of these nations. There are gonna be people from some of the most outer parts of the earth, and there's gonna be people from some major metropolitan areas, and there's gonna be some people that we've never seen in this life, but they'll have the ability to recognize that it's the seed we sowed, it's the things we did, it's how we connected the dots that we were able to get them into the opportunity to hear the, 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 the message, receive it by faith, and then grow in their own grace and their own power.
when we come back. If you understand that you are uniquely, supernaturally gifted to do that, and you begin to believe for that gift to begin to activate, then I don't care if you're 65, if you're 25, you are going to begin to flourish. Well, I have been blessed by the Hagee ministry in many ways, but one that sticks out to me is how they focus on every single generation and they honestly live out their mission statement. Thank you. Thank you for providing a place for me to build community and to grow not only personally, but in my walk with the Lord and being able to bring others to Christ. Israel is the only nation on earth created by a sovereign act of God. This is the land where Jesus was born and where he will return to rule for 1,000 years. This year commemorates the 75th anniversary of Israel's statehood. As Christians, it is imperative that we celebrate with our Jewish brethren and that we recognize their absolute title to the Holy Land today and forever. Please send your best possible gift in support of Israel and you'll receive our Hagee Ministries and Israel Keychain, along with our Why Christians Should Support Israel booklet. For your gift of $200 or more, we'll also include a gold mezuzah with the Star of David and a framed Hebrew home blessing. In a world filled with chaos and anti-Semitism, let us be the voice echoing God's eternal love. Receive these gifts today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org slash support. Yeah. So what would happen in the world of construction, in the world of our classrooms, in the world of our moms. hospitals, hospitals. Yeah. our stay-at-home moms who are actually one of the most important, and I yes. even write about that in the book. Absolutely. Okay, what would happen is everybody got this. If everybody got the same mentality that Stephen had, and everybody realized that the value of what I'm good at is actually a God-given gift to help me to stand out in the arena of the world that I'm called to. Yeah. You know, in the book I do describe um, a, a guy that asked to have a meeting with me who was a multi-billionaire. And uh, it's pretty funny. I, I will say, I want to set this up because it's a hilarious story. I'm, I'm getting ready to speak for one of the Bethel Group conferences last year in Dallas at the big mm -hmm. arena. And the guy over it calls me and goes, man, there's a, there's a multi-billionaire. He's doing a, quote, God tour. I said, what's his God tour? He says, <laughs> he's flying his private jet around and meeting with certain ministers that he wants them to speak into his life and help him to sharpen him. And, I, and, and you're one of them. And I went... Okay. You know, this is so interesting. Yes, I'm doing yeah. it. So at the Telstra Arena, I think it's the Telstra Arena or whatever it is in Dallas, they set up a room. We had a three-hour lunch. And this guy actually really ended up ministering to me because he, the first thing he said to me, and this is when I was all ears, he said I was floundering in, in, in the marketplace. I knew, I knew God had called me to be a businessman. And I was doing horrible because he said, John, I was doing everything in my own strength. I was doing everything according to the books in the business world yeah. I was reading. He said, I was your classic businessman doing everything right but failing. <clears throat> and he said, I'm sitting in church one, one day and I'm watching my pastor preach. And the thought comes to me, he's called to do what he's doing. And he totally relies on the Holy Spirit to do that. To do it. I'm called to do what I'm calling. Why don't I rely on the Holy Spirit? So he said, and I what started, a powerful thought. oh my oh. gosh, that's yeah. so, so he said, I sat down every morning and I just get a piece of uh, notepad in front of me. And he said, I just write down the things the Holy Spirit would tell me to do. And he said, John, some were so crazy unconventional. He said, but I thought I've already failed. I'm going to just do this. And he said, sure enough, it started working. He said, one thing I did, I did it 20 times. The Holy Spirit told me, I thought, what in the world does this have to do with business? He yeah. said, I did it. And now I own 20 hospitals in Vietnam. And he told me how he bought the second largest bank in the world. He to told me how now he's developing jet engines that run on batteries that will work. And he said, we're just about four years away from launching this thing. And I'm like, ah! Yeah. <clears throat> and so here, here now he's flourishing. He's got people's attention in the business world, you know, because he's so successful. But he gives the glory to God. Yeah. So now think about it. If he's reading all the books on, on, on how to do business and all of that, yeah. people go, man, you're so successful. Well, you know, I have this education and I've read this book and that book. How much greater that he goes, you know, I was a failure in business. Let me tell you how, how? I became so successful. Yeah. 
And, and if you look at Isaiah, God speaks through that prophet and says, I'm the Lord God that teaches you how to profit. God's will, Mo Moses prayed actually twice. Well, he didn't pray this twice. He prayed it with emphasis. He said, make our efforts successful in the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. in, I think it was 90, 91 or 92. And he said it again, make our efforts, efforts. successful. Jabez, make me successful, Correct. right? Why? Because I want to be a witness for your glory. glory. Yeah. I actually... I hope I'm not dominating this conversation. No, this is why we brought you here. Um, <laughs> Kendall gets to listen to me talk all the time. <laughs> so I'm sitting in, 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 across the dinner table in a restaurant in Detroit. And the guy sitting there said, John, I don't know if I've ever really shared with you my testimony. He said, I was on the senior design team for General Motors. And he said, as a member of the senior design team, they because we are such a, a unique team, they would do a analysis on us for our productivity because we're so important to General Motors' success. He said, so they would do a cost production analysis on us once a year. And he said, basically, the cost production analysis is what our inventions made the company and what our inventions saved the company. They'd add that together mm -hmm. to give each employee's cost analysis for the senior design team. Yeah. He says, so I'm reading in the book of Daniel that Daniel was 10 times wiser, more innovative yeah. and creative than the best leaders in, Dan in Babylon. And he said, that wasn't his assessment, that was the king of Babylon's assessment. Yeah. And he said, I start thinking, Babylon was the most successful nation in the world. These guys come from a little country, right? They, they, yeah. they, 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 the, the, the leaders in Babylon have been taught by the best scientists, the best leaders, teachers in the world. The world. He's coming up with all these ideas and Daniel gets promoted. He's coming up with ideas they never thought of. He gets promoted above all of them. Yeah, quickly. He, 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 yeah, so he said, John, I threw my Bible down on the desk when I read this and Daniel, that he distinguished himself among the, the government officials of Babylon? Because Daniel 6, 3 says that. He says, threw my Bible down and says, I should be 10 times better than anybody on the senior design team. See, so he said, I started praying. What's he doing? He's activating his faith to get that grace. He said, that year when I started praying, the number two man in the entire senior design team was $30 million, his cost production analysis. He said, I was the number one man and I was $300 million. Wow. 10 times to so the So he was 10 times and that's exactly what he was praying. See, I'm firmly convinced we don't have results like this because we're not praying accurately. Yeah. We're not believing you, accurately. You have not because you ask yeah, not. not. And so then you I ask a miss. this book because I want to, not only do I help people identify their gifts, develop their gifts, but I want people to have the faith to develop their gifts. Yeah. Because so, it's no good. I'm not trying to develop your natural abilities. I want the supernatural ability because the Bible shows that it's actually God's yeah, ability that he entrusts to us. Yeah. I want people to develop that. And, and you illustrate it so beautifully so many different ways in the book, not only with, with real life stories of conversations you've had, but the scriptural uh, foundation for individuals to be able to go search it out in their own Bible and, and be able to see it for themselves. Uh, but over and over, it just echoes as a theme because, I mean, as you're sitting here discussing this individual who prayed for a tenfold increase in, in his distinguishment above his team, you know, and, and you're talking about having the faith to activate it. Uh, the Bible says all things are possible to those that believe. Mm -hmm. and, and, and oftentimes, because we like this sacred secular thing, we say, I can believe God for a miracle. I can believe God. I can believe God. I can believe God. And God's saying, what if you just believed me for a great idea when you went to work tomorrow? What if you just yeah. believed me to answer that question? That. Yeah. What if you just believed me to help you have the best Monday that you've had in a long, long time? <laughs> because I think so many times we want to give, you know, we want to save our faith for the big things because we like to think it's, it can be wasted. You know, I've only got so many tokens and, and, and once I'm done with my faith tokens, I'm just out. But it, you build faith because you continue to believe that if God can help me do this, then he can help me do this. And, he and, can and help when me you do watch this, him do it. He can help me do this. Yeah. I mean, our prayers should make a difference in this world. And a lot of us pray like it's only going to matter in the next world. And, and Jesus no, taught no, us no. when you pray, pray this way, daily bread. Give us this day our daily yeah, bread. Yeah. Give me Monday's bread today because I can't get Tuesdays today. Right. You know, and, and so I think that there's a lot of people who are watching and, and I think their ears are hearing what we're saying 
and there's a part of them that in their heart they want to believe it. But if you were across the table from, you know, the the twenty something year old mom who's wanting to know, am I making a mistake by giving up my career to raise my kids? Or the 40-something-year-old professional who says, I've done this 20 years and I don't know if I got another 10 in me. Or the 65-year-old grandfather who says, I really hope I'm making a difference. How would you encourage them to believe today that they can multiply their God-given potential? First of all, I would say you have unique gifts in you that all of us need. I mean, what God has placed in your life is needed by others. It's not That gift isn't for you. And so the question is, are you going to release? Are you going to get into the river and are you going to just float with the river? Or are you still going to stay, say, ankle deep, knee deep or waist deep in order so that you can maintain control? Once you really get into that river and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in what you are doing, whether it's stay at home mom, whether you're walking into a classroom of a public school, whether you're walking into the hospital as a nurse, Whatever you do, if you understand that you are uniquely, supernaturally gifted to do that and you begin to believe for that gift to begin to activate, then I don't care if you're 65, if you're 25, you are going to begin to flourish. Smith Wigglesworth woke up to what was on his life when he was in his 50s. It's not too late. We need your gifts, whether you're 80 Whether you're 60, whether you're 40, whether you're 20, whether you're 10, we need your gifts in the body because those gifts aren't in me and I need what you have because the body builds itself up by what every part contributes and what the part contributes is supernatural abilities. So I want to believe for you right now that God will put his grace upon you in such a profound way. And the Bible doesn't say come sheepishly to the throne of grace. It says come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. There is need in your world right now. And so there needs to be grace, charisma, manifesting for that world that is in need and God will lead you to the people that your unique gifting will benefit. And so Father, I pray for every single person watching this program. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, you have placed at least one, but probably many gifts upon this man or woman who's listening right now. And I'm asking in the name of Jesus that their faith would grow and that they may receive the grace of God to be able to change their world and build your kingdom, Lord, in such a way that will bring joy and pleasure to your heart. I commit this man or woman to you, and I pray that as they continue to read your word, that Holy Spirit, you'll open up more revelation to them because Jesus said the church would be built on revelation knowledge. Open up that revelation that will make them effective in their world of influence. In Jesus' name, we pray. Matt, Kendall, and I agree in Jesus' name that this is done. Amen. 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 When we come back, we're going to have one more final segment so that you can see how God is using everyday people like yourself to change lives all over the world. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back on The Difference. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand up. God has made it possible for us to reach the nations of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We're saving the world one life at a time. He who saves one life saves the world. The latter years are going to be greater than the former years. Honor Pastor Hagee's 65 years of ministry and go to jhm.org slash 65 years. And now, here's more of the difference. John, one of the things that you and Lisa have partnered with Kendall and I on and believing to see change a generation is our sanctuary of hope. Oh, I love Uh, love that. It's another place where the unseen is doing even greater things than the seen. You know, people see the facility. People see the lives of the children that are coming there and the young ladies that are finding a refuge where they can have their baby and, and give it a life, life sentence, sentence instead of a death sentence. Yeah. But without hundreds of people willingly saying, I'll be an unseen part of that work and, and making the difference in the lives of those individuals who are there, 
we don't have the ability not only to accomplish the work today, but not to, to see the harvest of that work tomorrow. It's the most beautiful collection of buildings. It's so well done. And I think about when a person is pulled out of a death sentence, pulled out of a hopeless situation, they become so grateful. I'm so grateful that I chose differently. I'm so happy that I chose you. I get to see you become the person God intended you to be. Thank you, Hagee Ministry Legacy Partners. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. When you partner with Hagee Ministries, your legacy impacts lives and transforms a nation. Call today or go to jhm.org partner. Would you just close our program by praying for people who are watching that not only would they be encouraged, but that they wouldn't give up and that they would recognize that God's plan and purpose for them is greater than they could ask, think, or imagine. Absolutely. You know, I'm reminded, Father, in Jesus' name of what the Apostle Paul wrote. He said that he would keep you strong to the end that you might be found blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is God who works in you, my brother and sister, not only just to will to do his will, but to do it. So Amen. Father, I am asking that your empowerment, the spirit of the living God would be upon every man and woman yeah. that is watching right now. I speak strength into your heart. I speak strength into your mind. I speak in Jesus' name, endurance into your life. Jesus prayed, not that Peter would avoid the trial, but that he would not lose his faith. So Father, I pray that faith would actually grow when the enemy tries to discourage, when the enemy tries to throw down when the enemy tries to stop which he will not do with any brother or sister watching this program right now I pray that their faith would not fail but actually that their faith would grow and mature and develop through these situations and so Lord God in Jesus name we pray today that every single person watching this program would now not only discover their gifts and operate in their unique giftings that you place on their life but that they would multiply them for your glory Amen. honor and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Kendall and I want to thank you for joining us today. We want to thank you for all that you do to make an impact for God's glory on this earth. The book is titled X, but the content is about multiplying your God-given potential. God bless you and thank you for being with us today on The Difference. What a great message it was from John Bevere and Matt. I so enjoyed just sitting there, taking in all the information from them about God-given potential. Each of us has God-given potential that we have with inside of us, that God has given us gifts and talents. I wanna encourage you, those stay-at-home moms, those doctors, those nurses, those lawyers, you have a gift that you can plant seeds into future generations. I wanna thank you for joining us here on The Difference, and we can't wait to see you again very soon.